you know a few minutes ago we we're just preparing them oh my love which is the traditional beer and I'm going to show you how it looks like how after fermentation overnight come with you Oops. come with me Malovu, which is a traditional beer, we use locally produced sorghum grains. They are fermented for about three days and then grinded to sorghum flour. The flour is then dried before it is used to make the beer. As you can see in this video, I'm helping my mother in the kitchen. And the first thing that we also need since we are cooking in the village a huge fire outside so that means also a lot of firewood and a big pot and i think the one that we're using here is about 40 liters traditionally this is prepared in clay pots at least that's how my grandmother used to make it but at the moment in the area where my parents are living it's very difficult to find clay pots i think they don't even have any more clay pot factories like I don't know anybody in my village who is still producing clay pot so because we don't have a clay pot my mother is going to do that in the metal container in the metal pot or the normal pot it's fine they don't use this pot for anything else it's only for making the beer the process of making omalovu is quite simple as you can see she takes the flour mix it with the water and then add it to the pot I can't tell you about the measurement because she's not measuring anything. I think she knows the measurements already because she, have, um, she has done this several times. And the special tool that you can see that I'm using here is um, it's just a small branch from, palm, from a palm tree. And I don't know, maybe this is the best, but everyone making Omalovu have this this tool that they use to steer the flour and make sure that it's well and evenly mixed with the water. It's not for the energy. Yep, cool. So it's going to be heated. Let me say heated for some hours mm. two hours two to three hours mm. but it doesn't it shouldn't boil oh. this is more like a sedimentation process when you leave it on the fire for three hours the larger particles settle down at the bottom of the pot and when she comes back as you can see in this video she's just taking off the top layer the bottom layer remains in the pot she will she adds more water to that and let it stay and cook for another three hours. But this is exactly why it should not boil. If it boils, you won't have that top layer. Now I get it. I didn't know. <laughs> Oh God, you're not that good at No, 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 in the end, that bottom thick layer is transferred into a huge filter. And we call this Oshi Mako. At least this is how we call it in Oshkwaludi. I don't know how it's called in other languages. But in Oshkwaludi, we call this filter Oshi Mako. And now we are waiting for my auntie to bring a container because there was no container below Oshimako. Yes. 
What you can see here, my mother is using a color brush, transferring omalovu from the pot into Oshimako and then only thin crystal clear beer comes out and drip into the green basin that, that you can see underneath here with my mother's name. I think it was marked for the wedding. At first everything is dripping very fast and it looks like it's only going to take maybe 20 minutes when we'll be done but no they let this stay there for i would say just for about two hours until there are no more drops coming out of this oshimako and what they do of course what we need is the layer at the bottom of shimako the liquid is what we want to make the beer and the rest which is like just a thick pulp from this sorghum flour is used to feed the animals on the farm, mainly the chickens and the pigs. Making omalovu takes a lot of time like everything else that you do at the village. So I would say the cooking and filtration is about half a day. Then you need eight hours overnight fermentation before it's ready to consume. But it's fine, time at the village goes by very fast. You just chill with your family and do small chores. Yippee! Last minute before the fermentation process. We are almost there. So it's now really cool, chilled, ready to drink. And come, let me show you how my mother keeps this. Ready? Yep, here. It's dark here. Do you think I need to go get you light? No, it's fine. It's automatic light, so it's fine. Yes, so what you can say here, this here is the traditional pot and it's filled with, you know, the drink and then the outside here is coated with just a layer of sand. And that's what I'm going to do because you have to do this every few minutes. So you have, um, you have a layer of sand here. What are you adding? Water. And why are you adding water? Oh, it's sand, otherwise how do you mold it? Mm -hmm. And you just mix it, mix it. Go. So you put wet sand on the... Uh, yes. On the thing. So you, so you keep the thing cold. This is really nice. And can you imagine the sand keeps it cool throughout the day? Yes. Is a. It's still fermenting, and you see the bubbles yes. are like coming. Like. You take a mini. This is like a mini zucchini. <laughs> Let me put it that way. It's a color brush. Mm -hmm. This is, you don't give somebody halfway. It has to be full. It has to be yeah, full. Just enjoy. Mm. This is refreshing. I don't know, it's, it's, it's like bitterness. It's also a little bit bitter from the yeast, but it's just nice. And I love this because the, I think the beer level is less than a normal beer. I think it's probably 1.5%. It's very, very light. Of course, it depends on how long you ferment it. There are family that ferment it maybe two times, but my mother only make it uh, overnight. But I think if you leave it until, like, if you leave it for two nights, this might be stronger than what we have at the moment. Now, one little, another important thing here: if you are pouring for somebody, and you put in the wooden container, but there's still a little bit in the calabash. Don't put it back in the pot. It's not allowed. I don't know why, but it's not allowed. So guys, that was it from my mother's kitchen. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you want to try out Omalovu, let me know so that we go to the village together next time. If you enjoyed this video, leave a comment. Very important for us. Give us a like. And also, if you're new, subscribe to our channel. 
even though Ali didn't come up in most of this video, was the one behind the camera and it's also here with me today editing. Yes. Of course, always. Yes, guys, looking at this video, I'm missing Omalovu so much. If you have checked our previous videos, I was always drinking. It's just so refreshing. It's the perfect drink when you are at village. So I will never, never go to the village in Namibia and not drink Omalovu. <laughs> so, guys, that's it. Ciao, ciao, ciao.